This is Math 142, and we are working on sections 13.1, and we're going to talk about the idea of a limit and how to find a limit numerically and graphically. Now, let's take a let's take a function. Now, with any function, we know that uh, we can usually graph it; it'll give us some sort of shape. Um, what I want to do though is I want to I want to talk about the difference between two things. One of them is just evaluating this at a point f of 2. In other words, plugging in 2 and getting a value. And the other is the idea of a limit. So the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 2x plus 5. And and f of 2 would just be I'm just plugging in 2. x is equal to 2. Oops, x is 2. Now here's the difference between these two things. This is a point. It's a, it's a place. It's a, a, a specific spot. Um, when I talk about the limit, this is a neighborhood. And by a neighborhood, what I mean is um, I'm looking for things that are happening around when x is 2. And in this one, I'm, I'm looking for what happens when x is 2. It's a, it's a subtle shift between the two uh, things. So this by this neighborhood is, I'm not worried about what actually happens when x is equal to 2. I'm, I'm thinking about what happens around it. So, you know, at some point, x is 2 on here. And what I want to know, know is, as I get closer and closer to x being 2, does y tend to some spot? So let's uh, let's let's do this numerically. Let's let's think about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually plug two into this function. I'm going to plug values really close to two into this function. So x squared minus two x plus five. So I have uh, x squared. Oops. And I'm going to have my table, um, I'm going to do table set. I'm going to change this to ask. Oh, it is ask already. Good. So I'm not going to plug in 2 exactly, but I want to, have, want to know what happens close to 2. So for example, what happens at uh, 1.5? It's about 4.25. What happens at 1.9? 4.81. How about 1.99? Or 1.999? So it's looking to me like as x gets closer and closer to 2 from from under 2, from less than 2, this is getting closer and closer maybe to 5. So let me try some other, some other values here. How about 2.001? Notice I can squeeze it from that. And what I'm going to do in this direction is I'm actually getting a little further away from 2 just so I can see the squeeze. So it looks to me like on here, as x in this direction, as x is getting closer to two from below, from less than two, this is getting closer to five. And as x is getting closer to two from above, 2.1, 2.01, 2.001, closer to five too. Notice how as these values squeeze in on two, these values here squeeze in on, on five. So it looks like as in the x direction, as that I'm getting closer and closer to 2 from below the 1.9 and all that, and from above the 2.01 and all that, as this is getting closer and closer to 2, the y values, y is up and down, right, squeeze it on 5. So it looks like numerically as this approaches 2, this approaches 5. Now notice I'm not saying that it actually is 5. I'm saying it gets close to 5. I know it's such a weird measure. Um, so this is about, again, the neighborhood. What's going on around 2? As x gets really close to 2 from above and below, what does y do? That's numerically. Let's think about that graphically. So I'll bring up, bring up Desmos. As I squeeze in to 2 in the x direction, I seem to be squeezing into 5 
in the y direction. That's the limit. Now I'm I'm not claiming that it actually goes through the point two five. It might, it might not. But what I'm saying is, as far as the neighborhood is concerned, as I let x get closer to two from below, this gets close, y gets closer to five. And as I let x get closer to two from above, y gets closer to five. So both directions it seems to squeeze in to five. Again, that's a that's a neighborhood measure. It's not an exact measure. So on my graph, what happened was the function as x got closer to 2, y got closer to 5 from both directions. So the limit as x approaches 2 is 5. It looks like it's getting closer and closer to 5. It might actually get there. It might not actually get there. It doesn't matter to me. But no matter how much I, I zoom in on this, it's looking like it's getting closer and closer to 5. Now, it may feel like the same thing, because you, you can notice over here, when I'm actually evaluating it, when I actually want to know what happens when f is when x is 2, if I plug it in, 4 minus 4 plus 5 is 5. It actually does equal 5. Now, that kind of feels like big deal. Why would you do that? So let's do some more examples. I'm saying g of x is x minus 5 over x squared minus... 25. So here's the limit as x approaches 5. So as x gets closer and closer to 5, what does this get closer and closer to as an output? This g of 5 is actually evaluate. This is actually plug it in and see what happens. So let me do that first. If I if I evaluate, this is not finding the limit. This is finding a specific point. g is 5. If I plug that in, 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 25 is 0. 0 divided by 0. That is that is unresolved. I, I cannot come up with an answer for this. I can't divide by 0. It's indeterminate. I can't determine an answer for it. So I can't I can't pin this down just by plugging it in. So let me think about this one. Let me do this one numerically. So I'm going to do this one on my on my calculator. And I'm finding the limit of that function as x approaches 5. So if I go at it from below, it would be like 4.9, uh, 4.99, 4.999. Looks like it's getting closer and closer to, to 0.1. Let me go at it from above, 5.001. Five point one. Yeah, so it looks like as I get towards x from below and from above, this is squeezing in on the point point one. Notice this is getting closer to point one from above. This is getting closer from below. So numerically, it looks like the limit of this is point one or one tenth. That was numerically. Let me do it graphically. Let me graph it and see what it looks like. Interesting. Okay, so I was squeezing in on 5. So 5's here. Well, let me just see what happens if I get on the point 5. It's undefined, which makes sense because it was 0 over 0 if I plug in 5. But notice, if I just get off it on either side, it's getting closer and closer to point 1. And then, it, you know, I even have rounding in this program, so it looks like it's it looks like it's at point one. That's actually just because it can only round so much. So graphically, as I as I look at this graph, as x is approaching five, it's squeezing in on this value right here, which has a height of point one or one tenth. So both numerically and graphically. I can see that the limit, well, I have some evidence that makes it look like the limit of this is 0.1, even though I can't evaluate it here. So g of 5, I can't plug 5 into here. It, it's not, it, there's a hole there, it's undefined. But I can talk about the limit of it. It seems to tend towards 0.1. That's the strength, that's the power in these limits. It allows me to deal with this. I can't divide by 0, so I can't deal with it.
All right, so let's do let's do another one. So we're going to find the limit as x approaches negative 5 of, of this function h, x minus 5 over x plus 5. So then look over here, evaluate it. If I just try and evaluate it straight out, I get negative 10 over 0. I, I can't divide by 0. So indeterminate. I can't, I can't resolve it. So let's try and deal with this one numerically, x minus 5 over x plus 5. Grab up my calculator. x minus 5. And it was going to be x plus 5. Okay, and I'm I'm headed towards negative 5 here. So in my table, I was headed towards 5 before. So if I'm heading towards negative 5, if I go from below, I could be like negative point. Um, so let me get at this uh, from below. So negative... Uh, 5.1, negative 5.01, and again, I'm squeezing in on negative 5. Negative 5.001, looks like it's getting larger. And uh, let's see, negative 4.999, negative 4.99, negative 4.9. Notice how that squeezes on negative 5. So as I go from below negative 5, this is getting bigger in a positive direction. And as I go from a, from above, notice it's getting in a negative. These are not converging to the same spot. So it looks like in the neighborhood, they're not going in the same direction. They're not going towards the same place. So what that leads me to believe is This limit does not exist. It's not converging in. It's not converging to the same y as x squeezes on negative five from below and above. Let's look at a graph and see if that helps us uh, think about it more. And we're converging to negative five. So here's negative five. Notice what happens. If we get at negative five from below, it's growing without bound in this direction, and we're getting at it from above. They're not going to the same spot. The neighborhood differs when I go from different directions. So this is a limit that does not exist. So this is a case where both I can't evaluate it, there's no, there's no answer, and the limit does not exist. Now this can happen in a lot of ways on a, on a graph. So for example, if I have a graph that looks like this, let's say this is negative two, this is one, this is negative one. If I had a graph that looked like this, and I'll, I'll just call this, my this is my function f. Notice what it does, as long as x is less than or equal to negative two, the function outputs negative one, but once it's greater than negative two, it outputs one. If I try to take the, the limit of this thing, as x approaches negative 2, notice it gets closer and closer to negative 2 from below, but it gets, I'm sorry, to negative 1, but it gets closer and closer, it's at 1 as it gets closer and closer to negative 2 from above. They diverge. They don't, when I go at this x value from below or above, they go to different places. That means the function does not exist, the limit does not exist. Even though f of negative 2 is this right here, that exists. It's the point negative 1. But in the neighborhood, as I get towards negative 1 from below and above, they diverge, they go to different places. So that uh, leads me to understand that the limit does not exist. If they went to the same place, even if there was a hole there, something like this, the limit would exist. It'd be that x value because they're going to the same place. Let's bring up an example. So this graph is crazy. Uh, so this whole function, this whole shape right here is f. So let's do a couple things. Let's take the limit um, of f as x approaches 3. So here's 3. 
As x approaches 3, this thing seems to squeeze in on 2. So that would be 2, right? Because as I get closer to closer to 3 in the x direction, my y values get closer and closer to 2. And if, even if I evaluated it, f of 3 is 2. Let's do another one. Let's pick this one. How about the limit of this function as x approaches 4? So as I'm getting closer and closer to 4, there's a hole there. So f of 4 itself, if I, was, if I was evaluating it, that does not exist. But I'm not. I'm doing the limit. What's the neighborhood tell me? And as x is tending towards 4, it looks like this is squeezing in on 4 from both above and below. So the y value is 4. How about if I wanted to do uh, 2? So as x approaches 2, notice from below I'm tending towards negative 2, and from above though my y value is 0. They diverge. They're not going to the same place, so the limit does not exist. So at this point, you should be feeling pretty comfortable. You can find a limit by looking at a graph, and you should be able to do it uh, by you know doing it numerically, shoving it in your calculator and doing some approximations for it. If you have questions, post them in the forum or message me. And have fun with this.